Hey there, welcome to Whiskey and What. I'm Whitney, and today's video is going to be a huge Dollar Tree collab, myself and seven other amazing YouTube creators. So stay tuned. It is a challenge, so instead of it just kind of being a theme, we all sent each other a box of goodies. Everybody had a different name, so it was kind of Secret Santa style. And we all sent up to 10 items from Dollar Tree. We all went, grabbed random stuff. And then also there were two challenge items in there. So my box came from Courtney over at Creative on the Cheap. Courtney sent me some awesome items, which you'll see in the unboxing, and some really challenging items. So I really had to think about it. So she did a really good job. My box ended up going to Shannon at the Daily DIYer. So I will have her video linked down below so you can check out all the stuff that she made with the goodies that I sent her from my Dollar Tree. So the goal here is to set you up with a ton of ideas of random products and different ways that you can use them at the Dollar Tree. Also, hopefully you can get a little bit into our brains and see how we create stuff. Also part of this massive Dollar Tree box swap is Caitlin over at Crafts by Caitlin, Jessica at Measure and Mix, Jennifer at Little Bit of Calm and Crazy, and Shannon, the Daily DIYer, Courtney, Creative on the Cheap, Yami, the Latina next door, Kristen over at Kristen K and myself. So that is eight videos. You'll be set all through the weekend on this content. I actually got this idea from Courtney. Put a little emoji down in the comments when you're watching everybody's video so they kind of know where you came from. If you came from my channel, put a baby and a little blue heart emoji for little man. Without further ado, let's see what's in this box and let's get crafty. All right, let's see what is in the box. Look how cute her handwriting is. Super cute. Okay, let's see what's in here. We've got... Oh, look how cute this is. Oh my gosh, how cute! Okay, let's do the challenge items first because... Why not? Oh my gosh, it's a dream catcher. Alright, start thinking about what I can do with that. And then here's number two challenge item. Oh, a little fairy garden situation for the other. But this is actually really cool. This looks like, you know, the wood here. Also in the box, we've got some stencils. Burlap. Can't go wrong with the Dollar Tree burlap. Oh, cute little craft bottle. I love these things. I've DIYed with these before. Wooden dowels. Same thing. These are great supplies. We've got some floral wire. These are embellishments. We've got a, oh, this is so cute. The little llama sign. A little birdhouse hanger, looks like from the spring line. Ooh, and the sign that says explore. It's a great shape. Okay, now we know what we're working with. Project number one is this cute little farmhouse sign. I wanted to keep stuff neutral so I could use this year round. And I will also show you on the left hand side here the items that I've used in each project. So this one checked off the llama sign, the floral wire, and the burlap ribbon for me. So let's see how I did it. Step one was to disassemble the llama sign. It took a little bit longer than anticipated, but I took the back off, took everything off, and then I started by painting the llama backing a couple coats of Waverly chalk paint. Then I went through and painted the buffalo check pattern. You could definitely use scrap of paper, but I do like painting this pattern on like everything. So I went through with some gray paint and painted some equidistant vertical stripes and then I went ahead and let that dry. Once that was dry I removed the tape and set it aside because you'll want it later to put it back on for the rest of the buffalo check. Then I put an additional piece of tape on there and marked where the white stripes are. This helps me so I know where to put that tape back on when I'm doing my black squares for the final step. So did the same thing here, painted that gray, 
and then I stuck my tape back on where I told myself to stick the tape back on and then I went through with some black Waverly chalk paint it's called ink and filled in those squares so I know this is pretty fast there's a lot of projects to fit into this video so I will link a video down below where I show how to paint the buffalo check a little bit slower so you can catch that if you're interested so once that buffalo check was painted, I removed the glass from the front of the sign because I couldn't remove the words I thought I could, but I could not. So now that is just exposed to the front, which honestly I didn't mind. Then I grabbed my floral wire and decided to give it a little hanging handle. So I used some of these assorted beads that I had in my stash from Michaels, and that was part of the whole situation if you had some stuff in your stash. Um, you could use that um, on the items. So I wanted to use up some of these. I'm trying to clear out stuff before <laughs> Little Man arrives. So I went through and used two different sizes of beads until it was the length that I wanted. And I liked this because I could bend it and it gave it a little bit more stability versus a jute twine. Went through, bent it around where I wanted it, and then I used hot glue to set it in place. So then that way if I was hanging it somewhere, it wasn't going to fall off. then I also reinforced it along the back with some more hot glue. The final step to give it a little pizzazz was I used the burlap ribbon to create a bow. You could go ahead and tie this, but I just created a look like this that was gathered. I plan to use it on a tiered tray, and I really like how it goes into project number two. They look like they came in a set. So project number two is this birdhouse sign. I used the globe sign, dowel rods, and the birdhouse wind chime type thing. So step one was to paint the buffalo check on to the circle again so the backgrounds matched. So went through and did that. And then I also disassembled the birdhouse and painted that with white chalk paint as well. I want to give that kind of a neutral base to work from. Then I went through and did the same process as before. Again, I will link a video down below for that buffalo check tutorial. We would just be here all day if I showed you a few times how to do that, but I've got ample videos that show that. So then I wanted to add some kind of pop of color to the birdhouse. So I cut and stained the wood dowels. I just used some Minwax that I had on hand. You can use whatever color you want. And I added a little bit of trim to the birdhouse to make it feel a little bit more rustic. Then I also used a little scrap piece for the little like perch that a bird would sit on. Glued that on to cover the hole. Then I wanted to add a similar hanger. This one, I wanted it to be a little bit more pliable. So I used just some jute twine. I strung some of those beads that I had and then I tied them in the holes where the gold chain used to be on the circular sign. Once that was done, I used my hot glue to stick the birdhouse directly to the center of the sign. And then my last step was to add this decal. I will leave it down below if you're interested in downloading it and cutting it out yourself. I like that it looks kind of Ray Dunn inspired and those birdhouses are really popular right now. So I like how that'll go with my overall decor. Project number three is this cute little antique kind of style mason jar. I used the craft jar, the blue embellishments and the stencils on this project. So I took the craft bottle and I knew that I wanted to paint this so that it gave it a farmhouse look. I gave it about three coats and then I put the lid back on and wrapped some jute twine around the top to make it look pretty rustic. Now my original plan was just to add the embellishments to the top but it ended up being a little more like blah than I wanted. So what I did is I did two embellishments on either side and then I put two together so it was a larger one in the center glued those on and then I decided to use some of the stencils from the stencil sheet to give it a little bit of dimension. My thought for this is that it would be a really good piece to use on a tiered tray. And finally, this is my challenge item project and I am in love with how it turned out. So I used this fairy garden base to create a seasonal farmhouse look for this carrot patch display. 
So step one, I took the fairy garden and removed all that grass because that thing shed so bad. <laughs> and then I went through with just some gray paint to cover up the bright pink flowers. You're not going to really see them, but I didn't want them to stand out if you did see them. So I gave it a couple coats so that the pink was just like neutralized. Then I made this little sign. I stained the ornament that I had grabbed from the Crafter's Square section at the Dollar Tree. And I added this really cute decal that I'll link for you down below. Then I marked where it would fit into the fairy garden and I added some reindeer moss that I had as part of my stash to kind of make it look like grass. The key here is to put enough glue so your stuff is sticking, but then also kind of take your hand through after it dries and make sure that you don't have a lot of stuff like sitting there. Because if not, if you knock it over or something, it's going to literally go everywhere. So I wanted to make sure it was stuck down. Then I took these carrots that I had on hand from a previous project and I glued them on there and that was it. Honestly, I was like, what am I going to do with this fairy garden? And then I just all of a sudden had this idea come to me, just a little carrot patch. You could add a bunny, you could add some eggs, you could add a ton of stuff here. But this is a really cool way to repurpose those little bases and it can really help add to a little vignette. So I had so much fun with this. When I first opened the box, I was like, what am I gonna make? Honestly, it was so fun just to kind of think and really like stretch my brain because usually if something doesn't work, I scrap it really quickly. I personally think I did pretty good. The only thing I didn't end up using was the dream catcher. So I used one of my two challenge items. I racked my brain, could not figure it out, but I'm pretty proud. Like I mentioned at the beginning of this video, my box came from Courtney, but if you follow the link in my description to Shannon's video, it will take you in a big loop. There will also be a playlist down below. A huge thank you once again to all those seven other ladies. I'm so, so excited to watch their videos and get some inspiration from them. So be sure to check the playlist down below. Thank you so much for stopping by. If you're new, I hope you will take a second to subscribe down below. Some of my favorite things to share here on the channel are DIYs. I love taking you guys shopping with me, decorating, farmhouse inspiration. I also love to do wood sign projects. So hit subscribe down below and check out some of my other videos if you are interested in that. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.